Emily Dunham talking about DevOpsing your resume. Let's give her a hand. Okay, hi there, I'm Emily Dunham and I'm gonna talk to you a bit about those pieces of paper that you have to submit when you're following up with some company who's hiring. My current job, which I'm super fond of, is being the infrastructure engineer for the REST and Servo projects. And my resume is a piece of code that helped me get into this awesome job. We as DevOps are fortunate enough to work in a field that often has more jobs than qualified candidates. But who here, by show of hands, has ever had a DevOps role that you just kinda hated? Some people. Yeah, it happens. So when you find yourself in a job that you'd rather get out of, the best thing you can do is ask around about who's hiring and what it's like there. But sometimes you just have to throw a resume into a pile. Now, who here actually enjoys updating your resume? Few hands, not a lot. So this one-off document that's hardly ever useful is often about as miserable to work on as an unmaintained server or an abandoned code base. But fortunately, we have the technology to fix all these things. So what does it mean to DevOps something? On the technical side, DevOps is characterized by building and reusing tools that make our tasks easier. And socially, DevOps is about charging past the bureaucracy of silos to work directly with the people who actually use your software and services. So what's this got to do with your resume? The first goal of treating your resume as a piece of code is to let you use the same tools on it that help you maintain code quality in the rest of your work. But a resume isn't judged on all of the same metrics as code. Readability and content are still important, but the aesthetics of its typesetting also contribute to the first impression that it makes on your behalf. My personal favorite tool for treating a resume as a single code file is called LaTeX. LaTeX is a typesetting tool that lets you write a single source file to describe everything about your document's typesetting and then render it into a PDF with a single command. You can also write macros that ensure style consistency between sections and automate the process of those little changes and tweaks that you might need to make. So once your resume is a file of source code that compiles into an output document, you can use your favorite version control tooling to track its changes. You can use separate branches to track the variants of your resume that correspond to different hats you wear. And as well as letting you develop features in parallel with each other, version control is a time travel technology. If you want to know what your resume looked like on a certain date, or undo removing some section, just git check out the appropriate commit. So now that your resume is this file that lives in version control, just like any other piece of code, you can start thinking about testing it. You can automatically spell check every change that you make, or you can verify that it still compiles without errors into a single page document. And once you've automated the process of catching obvious errors like spelling issues, you can use the tools that you already use to get feedback on your code to accelerate the process of having a peer or mentor review changes to your resume's content. So you should use whatever tools you're comfortable with for all of these things. But I would suggest choosing free or libre technologies for a project as long-lived as I hope your resume will be. Otherwise, you're signing yourself up for a lot of work if today's trendy vendor goes out of business or discontinues or changes their proprietary offering. So that's how you DevOps your resume, but what do you put in it? One of a DevOps most important tasks is to identify and communicate with their end users. So you can use the skills from communicating in your job to help make your resume more useful to its readers. For instance, consider that your resume's readers will often be pressed for time. You can help meet their needs by prioritizing the most relevant content, keeping your sentences short or replacing them with bulleted lists, and only including the information that tells them things they want and need to know. You should scrutinize your resume from its reader's perspective to see what kind of potential colleague or employee it's making you look like. And if you have too much content, remove any technology that it would make you sad to have to work with every single day. <laughs> Once you've put all this work into developing your resume's content, the last step is to recycle it. Put it in your LinkedIn profile if you like getting contacted by recruiters, and use your resume's content to keep the About Me section of your site or blog up to date. So maintaining your resume, just like any other piece of code, helps it benefit from the exact same skills that it exists to showcase. 
And remember, talking to other humans is still the best way to make sure you're applying for a role that will actually make you happy. When you tell people that you're job hunting, let them know what you've loved about your favorite jobs and hated about your least favorite. And you're welcome to reach out to me if you have resume questions or just want to chat. So thank you. Thank you.